Hi everyone, <laughs> morning. Before you have some lunch, <laughs> I'm going to share with you my um, entrepreneurial experience. I don't know why I'm standing here, but I'm feeling quite happy. <laughs> and um, um, it's not something that is very um, serious or very high tech. I'm not going to share with you my latest research or any global trend. It would be something quite simple, fairly simple, that you think you might uh, do it like after lunch. <laughs> it can be as simple as that. And I think that could be the essence of it, because uh, uh, you might you might have heard about uh, a lot of uh, other speakers talking about something that's really amazing. <laughs> but what I'm going to tell you is quite simple. And, um, and um, maybe I uh, introduce myself first. My name is Ming Wai. I was born and raised in Hong Kong, speaking perfect Cantonese. <laughs> and uh, my mum was a worker in garment factories. And my dad was a builder. And I grew up in a public estate, a uh, very ordinary life. And I think maybe the most extraordinary thing that I did in the past three years is I gave up my ordinary job, <laughs> which is a big thing here in Hong Kong. And I'm still not trying to find one, and I'm still surviving, <laughs> which is quite nice to be here in Hong Kong without a job. And um, <laughs> I'm still okay, feeling okay. And, um, and um, <coughs> I never, well, as you know from my background, I have never ever thought about I will um, start my business. Um, but then somehow I start my business with no connections, no money, and no research from the MIT, nothing. <laughs> I just started. I didn't think about too much. And then one day, it was one day, um, in the middle of the night, I was checking my email um, when I'm writing my um, thesis, uh, Master in Urban Planning. I was writing my thesis, being fed up with all these books on my tables, and it suddenly popped up a competition on social enterprise, which is organized by the previous speakers, Mingos. <laughs> I have to be very grateful. This is two words that actually changed my life. This is the first time, that was the first time, I heard about social enterprise. I don't know what it is. I don't know what is business. And then, and then I tried to Google it. <laughs> what is social enterprise? And then I was enlightened. Wow, that's great. I can connect society and economics together, which would probably solve a lot of problems in Hong Kong, especially this money-driven society in Hong Kong. I was like so amazed. I put away my thesis. <laughs> If I could actually add the environmental aspect into social enterprise, then I would touch all the three elements in sustainable development, which I was taught the whole time in my master. And then I thought, wow, this is the, this is the time that I can actually do something, implement something that I can learn uh, from my master. And then I quickly come up with an idea that I could, well, you have to listen, it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I would use newspaper to make furniture provided by all these old ladies pushing heavy trolley on the street. That sounds quite amazing, isn't it? So that's good, huh? I, I write my first business plan without knowing what is business plan. <laughs> I download a template and follow all the sections. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I hand it in. <laughs> but um, I didn't win the competition. I'm not a champion. I won a, uh, a, um, an award called Best Social Mission. But you can tell from the awards, it's a good idea, but it doesn't earn money. <laughs> so I'm not a champion, but it's good. I have a good heart to win this Best Social Mission Award. And then I have, to, um, I have to tell you, this is a furniture that I proposed, like a jellyfish side table. And who would buy a jellyfish side table made by newspaper and cost two thousand dollars <laughs> I guess that's no one probably <laughs> and yes and then well anyway um, after the competition I have a lot of business advisor encouraging me it's like your ideas works <laughs> keep 
keep on doing it. I feel very optimistic. I don't know why I feel very optimistic about this. <laughs>
But when I get back home, I think about it. Probably she summarized a lot of people's comments. Yes, it is nice to be green, it's nice to reuse material, but I don't want to be on me. I don't want to pay for it, I don't want to pay so much for it. So I guess that is a good comment, although that was quite harsh. I still remember how hard and how loud she said so. <laughs> it was quite hard, but that's okay. <laughs> I, 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 I keep on doing it. And then I, I think um, maybe this is too much work, too much design, too much work. I spend too much resources onto it. So I started to make um, souvenirs, which is kind of standard products that I can sell in bigger quantity I, with more expected outcome. Because in retail, you will never know who will buy how many bags in, you know, in, in what time. But in um, souvenirs, I can expect that they're coming. So it was going quite well. We are selling our banner picture frames, brooches, and small items. And then we, we hit to a point that we managed to pitch our ideas in Art Museum Hong Kong. It's like, wow, the business is coming. We get into government. And then it's like, we have to meet him with them. And then it seems like they were very interested. And then we chat along. It seems like, wow, it's a good idea to reuse that nice banner, huge one, into um, souvenirs that sell into the bookshop. And then we find some case study, you know, some other countries are doing it. But then we end the conversation when they don't know how to give the rubbish to me within the tender system. And then we were like, ah, why I have to pick up your rubbish um, within the tender system without other renderer? No one actually wants it. But anyway, it's finished. And then, and then we, ah, and then we tried to explore the overseas market. We went to Japan in the um, <coughs> Tokyo Designer Week. It was quite fun to hang out in Japan and uh, we sell our stuff and then we managed to sell our, our stuff and cover our expense. So I'm quite happy with that, but not more than that. We didn't get any orders, <laughs> but that's okay. And then unfortunately, um, I have to tell you, at that point, my bank account only had $500 left. <laughs>
And then I started to explore other materials. And then I built um, 2D wood trophy, <laughs> retained wood trophy. Usually you have 3D one. If you, if you take a picture in the front, it looks the same. <laughs> Thank you. 